couldn't sleep last night. I uh, was very tired. I worked in my garden all yesterday, uh, fixing some raised beds that had begun to rot and had to put some new lumber out, fix them, get them, get them back in order, back in shape, because spring's just around the corner. It's going to be time to put some things in those beds, plant some things. So I worked out there all day long. It was really tired and went to bed early, fell asleep fast, and then woke up just a couple hours later, <laughs> rolled over thinking, oh man, it, is it three, four o'clock already? It was 1030. <laughs> and I could not go back to sleep. And I lay there in the bed just a couple hours thinking about this sermon, thinking about you, and it just couldn't go back to sleep. So I got up and worked on it a little bit more. In Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Jesus said, we all have a choice to make. Listen to what he said. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad. And its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult. And only a few ever find it. Jesus used gates and roads as a metaphor about eternal life and eternal damnation. The narrow gate and the difficult road represents the way of life that leads to eternal life in heaven. The narrowness of the gates, the narrowness of the gate represents the exclusive nature of the path to eternal life. Jesus is the only way to eternal life. He explicitly says so in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me. So some will not go to heaven because they will either reject Christ or they will never deliberately choose him. Jesus said the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult. Living a life that adheres to Jesus' teaching requires discipline, sacrifice, willingness to go against the prevailing norms and values of society. This path is not the easiest, but it is the one that leads to true life. And Jesus wants everyone to have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. I want that for you too. But the reality is the gate is narrow and the road is difficult and few ever find it. Most people choose the wide gate and take the highway to hell. It's a route that seems easiest and most convenient, requiring little sacrifice or change. It aligns with our natural desires and the immediate gratification of our wants without considering the long-term consequences. And besides, it's the road that most people choose. And so you don't really even have to think about it. You just go along with everyone else. It requires little discipline, no self-examination, no repentance or transformation. And yeah, it's easy, it's convenient. It offers the false promise of freedom. But it's a lie. While the gate is wide and the path is easy, it leads to spiritual death. Separation from God. Eternal punishment in hell. And I woke up full of sorrow and concern for the multitudes of people traveling on the highway to hell and for the very few who choose the narrow, difficult road to heaven. And I lay in bed thinking about how I may have failed 
to do my part to encourage others to choose the right path, one that leads to heaven. And I lay there thinking about all of you who would be sitting in this congregation this morning and those who might be watching online listening. And I thought about how so many of you may think that you're walking on a path that leads to eternal life and to heaven just because, maybe because of the wrong reasons, maybe because you are baptized as an infant, or if you are baptized as an adult, or you go to church, or your parents or your grandparents were great Christians. Or you believe that God really does exist. You believe that. Or because you're a good person. Or maybe because you believe everyone is going to go to heaven, right? Listen to me. No, don't listen to me. Listen to Jesus. He says it right here in our scripture. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. And most people think it's so easy. They say, just be a good person. Go to church if you want. Be nice. You'll go to heaven. But Jesus says, the gateway to life is very narrow. And the road is difficult. And only a few ever find it. You see, the idea here is, you can have good intentions and still miss the gate to life. You can't just go walking carelessly through life, assuming you'll stumble through the right gate. It's not the idea that Jesus expresses here. No, it's, it's actually more like you might miss it. Maybe even if you're kind of looking for it, you still might miss it. You may think you went through the right gate, and you might realize too late that you chose the wrong one. If you want to be one of the few people Jesus talks about who find the gateway to eternal life, you better be serious about it. You better study. You better choose wisely. You know, people get serious about all kinds of things in this life. They'll work hard to achieve their goals Many different kinds of goals you could work hard and be serious about. Athletic achievements, academic achievements, finding a a life partner, someone you can spend the rest of your life with, a successful career, owning a home, your health, your wellness, maybe traveling. How many of you sat down and planned out a, a really good really awesome trip that you're going to take. You started a year in advance planning for it, studying about what it would be like when you get there. Where do you need to go? Who do you need to see? What do you need to bring with you? And you dedicate yourself to making sure you you don't miss anything and you do it right. Maybe you can think about some of the things in your life where you've really been serious about it. People plan and save and study and invest themselves in all kinds of things. Some things that are good and important. But the most important thing, the thing that literally lasts for all eternity, so many people approach carelessly as if this most important thing just going to happen automatically. But we know that few things worth really having just happen automatically. You have to commit. You have to strive. You have to take it seriously. 
If you really want to be a winning athlete, you need to intentionally train to succeed. If you're going to perform at the highest level, you have to practice daily to get good. You have to maybe work out to grow stronger. You might even change the way you eat to become healthier and fuel your body. Well, there are things that you can do to help you be one of the few that Jesus talked about who finds the narrow gate that leads to eternal life. <clears throat> and I want to suggest every one of us ought to dedicate our lives to these spiritual trainings. Number one, first and foremost, repent and seek forgiveness. Acknowledge your sins and mistakes. Repent and seek God's forgiveness. The process of turning away from sin is crucial in finding the narrow gate. You will never find the gate until you decide to start looking. And repentance is that first step. Number two, commit to live for Jesus. You see, Jesus chose you. He left the glory of heaven and went to great lengths to come looking for you. But you have to choose Jesus. You have to consciously decide to be his disciple, to apply his teachings to your daily life, including loving your neighbor, forgiving others, practicing humility, and serving those in need. <clears throat> Number three, join a faith community. Being part of a church or a spiritual community provides support, accountability, and encouragement as you strive to live a life that reflects Jesus' teachings. You know, the disciples, the twelve, they were part of a group as they follow Jesus. If, if it required the 12 to be a part of a group, don't you think you do need to be a part of a group too? Number four, read the Bible. Regularly reading and studying the Bible helps you to understand God's principles and Jesus' teachings. This knowledge is foundational in discerning the narrow path. It's the only way you're going to know which gate to go through and which path to follow in life. How else are you going to know unless you read God's Word? Number five, pray. Prayer is, power, is a powerful way to communicate with God, seek His guidance, and express your desire to follow Him. It aligns your heart with God's will. Prayer is the heart of walking on the right path with Jesus Christ. And if you're deeply committed to prayer, delving into it daily, God is going to pull you back when you stray off course. When you start to go through the wrong gate, he's going to show you, no, don't go that way. Go this way instead but you've got to be dedicating your life in prayer. Some of you are already doing these things. Some of you need to do better. Some of you need to take a good hard look at your life and recognize you're just blindly walking through life along with everyone else and you don't even realize maybe you're walking on the highway to hell. And you better wake up before it's too late and you find yourself suffering for eternity. Lord Jesus, thank you for waking me up in the middle of the night. I pray, O oh Lord, that you'll wake us all up right where we are so we take seriously these challenging words of Christ 
about these two paths, these two gates. One that leads to you. and One that leads to an eternal separation from you. Lord God, help us not to choose the wrong path. At least, O oh Lord, make us conscious of the seriousness of the choice. And let us choose wisely. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen.